Hey guys, so today I'm finally publishing my outstanding mermaid cake. It is super class, much fancy, extra wow. Like so much extra wow. I feel like I wouldn't be able to afford this cake if I didn't make it. Now I love the way this turned out, so let's get started. My name's Sandra Bullock and you're... Boy? Boy, where's girl? Girl! Girl! Now to create this cake, I'm using my PVC pipe stand system. Now if you want an in-depth look at how to create this pipe system, there is a video hey, for you, you didn't in the description. Shoot the video. There's a video coming soon to be announced. Now the first thing you should notice is that I didn't place my pipe in the middle of my cake board. I want there to be some sort of like illusion of movement, so I'm not stacking the cake straight up and down. I'm starting with three six inch round cakes and I'm just placing buttercream in between each layer of cake. Now the first cake is in the middle of the cake board which means it's off to the side of my PVC pipe. Now the cakes on top of that are slowly gonna creep towards the middle of the PVC pipe. The cake on top of this is five inch round cake. Then I'm going to finish my cakes off with a four inch round cake on top of that. After that, I just started to carve my mermaid tail shape. Now for basic mermaid shapes, you're just making a cone shape, but I wanted this to look like she was diving into the ocean. So I'm adding a little bit of a wavy curve. I'm creating like this slope on one side of my cake. Now this footage kind of looks very similar to my Christmas seal cake. In fact, it is uncanny. Maybe even the exact same footage. <laughs> I recycled this cake. <laughs> now after I was happy with my shape, I gave my entire cake a crumb coat. Just placed on some buttercream and made sure all of the crumbs were sealed within this layer of cake. Now for the top of my cake, I didn't think that the cake would hold up, so instead I'm wrapping the top of the PVC pipe with some fondant that I mixed with CMC. Now I placed my cake into the fridge to set up, and while it was setting up, I was watching a show on Netflix called... What was it? I watched so many shows, I forgot. Instant Hotel. So Instant Hotel is like an Airbnb competition. A whole bunch of couples who own Airbnbs compete to see who has the best Airbnb in Australia. And I guess they call it Instant Hotels in Australia. It's not the best show in the world, but there are some really funny moments. And there's this one very aggressively mean queen. That guy, yo. I feel like if I met him in real life, I would not want to be that guy's friend, but as a viewer watching a television show, he's like must-see TV. The devil is in the detail. That's what that angry queen said in the show I was watching. He kept saying that. The devil is in the detail. And he kept piping up his own B&B, but his looked like a tropical retirement home too. Now while I was watching my stories on the TV. I was working on all the mermaid features and the hardest thing to create about this cake was the mermaid tail. Now I don't really know how you're supposed to do this professionally, but I just did it the JK way, which is do whatever you want. First, I decided to outline my mermaid tail on a piece of parchment paper. I folded this in half and drew the shape with a permanent marker. So that when I cut it out, I had a mirror image for the second flipper. Now I wanted this tail to be massive because this mermaid needs to swim fast. She's got to compete with Aquaman and all of the Atlanteans right and there. They swim pretty fast. They, they swim almost as fast as when JK is like running to a new buffet that just opened in his area. What's better to you guys? Four plates of like okay tasting food or one plate of extremely great tasting food. I don't know, I'm still like up in the air. Now I wasn't sure that the fondant was gonna hold up even with the CMC mixed in, so I decided that I was gonna use cardboard. So I have a piece of cardboard, I plunged a dowel into it so that I could put the dowel in the middle of my PVC pipe. Then I traced my mermaid tail I'm actually gonna cut this out a little bit smaller so that when I place the fondant on top of this, you won't see any of the cardboard. Now once I was happy with that, I created a more detailed mermaid tail on some parchment paper. Then I started to add my fondant. 
I just scored the fondant with some veining fondant tools to make it look like mermaid flippers. You know, like the way that they would flow underwater. Now I'm not placing these flat on my piece of cardboard board. I'm adding some texture and lumps so that they look like they're flowing under the sea. And I'm just layering fondant on top of each other to hide the cardboard and create this effect. Now this was really hard. I had to let this set for a day so that it would get really, really hard. And then on the second day, I like, man, I didn't really know how to do this. So I got a cake board, I placed on a clean towel and some cotton balls. I wanted to make sure that all the texture I created on my mermaid tail didn't get smushed and flattened down on the cake board. After that, I just repeated that process over with more fondant and created that curvy flowing underwater texture. I let this set overnight. Actually, I let this set overnight and then overnight again. I was scared, this was huge, and I wanted to make sure that the CMC and the fondant had time to harden. I didn't want it to flop over, I didn't want it to break. Just being extremely cautious, especially because I'm filming this on camera. I tried to be like as careful as possible, but I guess not that careful, because look, I can't even remember to wipe the paint off my arm. Now with the flipper done, the hardest part of this cake is done and I moved on to my mermaid scales. I'm using white fondant to create each of my scales and I don't really use white fondant to do any of my creature work. But I wanted to make sure that I could paint each individual scale a different color and I really wanted them to have white highlights. So I rolled out some white fondant and I'm using a flower petal cutter to cut each of my scales. Now you can totally use a round cookie cutter, but this petal cutter adds so much texture to the edges. And I wanted to add Add even more texture so I'm using a fondant impression mold. This one looks like a fan. I bought this on Wish and it was free but shipping was a dollar and it took a month to get to me. So if you're planning to recreate this cake then you're gonna have to make sure you have everything a month ahead of time even a month and a half ahead of time. It is crazy how long this takes but it's super cheap once you create one scale you're gonna want to repeat that process a million times or to be exact like a million and one times now I took my cake out of the fridge and I decided that I was gonna wrap it in a very large very thin piece of white fondant and I know you guys are gonna say JK I don't think I've ever seen you use a thinner piece of fondant. Are you doing all right? Do you have a fever? But wait, because we're going to wrap this in another layer of fondant. Oh, okay. That sounds exactly like you. <laughs> Remember my saying, more fondant than you're willing to eat. Oh, your money back and you guys didn't pay anything. So y'all are good. Now I found that it would be easier to apply each scale if I had a piece of fondant underneath it. I just wet the large piece of fondant with some magic sauce, got it really sticky, and then started to layer each scale on top of each other. I started at the top and just worked my way down to the mermaid's waist. This is a mermaid cake technically, but it looks like a very exotic fish in the final product. An exotic fish that I can't afford because it looks so expensive. This looks like it costs more than my whole like Western Dental fiasco. Oh God. And also don't go to Western Dental. They overcharge you for everything. And also don't eat a lot of cake because you're going to have to go to the dentist. And also take care of your teeth, you guys. Gosh, or you're going to need fillings. Now once I was finished with my scales, I actually cut a slit into the side of my cake and added a dorsal fin. A dorsal fin and two pectoral fins. Are these the right names for each of the fins? I don't know. Do I care? I'm just like, yeah, kind of, but am I too lazy to research it? Yeah, yeah I am. <laughs> totally don't have to do this, but remember the devil's in the details and yo, I'm the devil. After that, it was time to start painting my cake. I decided on yellow because I thought it'd be really pretty. So I painted each scale with yellow food coloring. And notice that I'm not painting the entire scale, I'm actually leaving the edge of the scale white. So it kind of gives each of my scales a white highlight. And I worked my way all the way around my cake and I wanted to add a little bit more depth. So I painted some of the scales orange as well as gold. And then I highlighted some of the edges of my scales gold as well. The devil's in the details and I'm getting tired of this saying. I hope I use it like enough 
in this video that I'll never have to say it again in my entire life. Now for the dorsal and pectoral fins, I painted them blue. I diluted a lot of food coloring with some magic sauce to give it this pale watercolor look. And again, I didn't paint the edges, I sort of just blended the white into the blue. Finished them off with some gold trim because the devil's in the details. I think I'm done. I don't think I need to say that anymore. I'm good. I'm good, thank you. When I was finished with my scales, it was time to add my mermaid fin. This was nerve wracking. I wrapped where the tail meets the cake with a little bit more fondant and then added some more scales. I needed the fin to be like removable because there's no way that this cake would fit in my fridge. It's too freaking big. And just like the other fins, I'm painting these with a diluted blue food coloring. I want you to take notice of two things. The first is that I didn't comb my hair like an idiot and this is gonna live on YouTube forever. So good job. And the second is that when I'm painting on the blue, I'm actually making sure that it works with all the grooves and the texture I created early on. I'm painting the edge of my fins gold just to make it look super more classy. How much would you charge for this cake? It has so much gold on it. Whenever people ask me to make cakes, I charge them what the view count is on the YouTube video. Because <laughs> nobody's ever willing to pay that much, which means I never have to make a cake. <laughs> now last but not least, I'm going to create some ocean water. Put some buttercream on the bottom of my mermaid tail. I added some blue-green buttercream on top and just blended them together with an offset spatula. And voila! My mermaid tail was complete. This cake looks sick, man. I can't get enough of it. I love the way that the water splashes on the bottom. I love the yellow of the scales and all of that gold detail. It like amplifies how amazing this cake is. But that mermaid tail though, right? It's not flat, very textured, and I love the way that the blue flows with all of the veining tool marks that I created. I did Photoshop the colors in this cake because I wanted to see what it would look like in pink, blue, green, purple. It looks so wonderful. I'm curious, what is your favorite color? Let me know in the comments below and let me know what kind of cake you'd like to see me make next. And also, would you like to see me make this in 30 minutes? I think that'd be so funny. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I love you. I will see you very soon. Peace.